All right, Pierre, super excited to chat with you today, man. You've you've had been so successful um, at running teams, been in the business for, what, 17, 18 years and uh, running uh, teams for 14 years. So, man, that's awesome. So I'm excited to, to hear about what you have to say about growing a team. So listen, 14 years running a team. Tell me a little bit about your team structure now and, and how it's changed kind of over the years, how you've adapted it with kind of how the market's changed or mindset around agents changed, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess uh, our team right now, we've got, uh, there's 17 of us. And um, uh, out of that, on top of that, we also have, um, so I guess the majority of that is agents. And then we have one um, customer support slash office manager slash kind of do it all. Um, that looks after everybody. And then we also have, um, we have, have a marketing guy. So, you know, our marketing guy looks after all the marketing for all of our agents and everything else. So now that has grown quite a bit over the years and, and has not always been the same, but, um, that that's where we are now. So pretty, I mean, you know, really you got a pretty substantial back end, Um, and then, so you've got, you know, again, the agents in the front end. So like in, for a newer agent or an agent that's kind of producing at a high level going, holy cow, I'm um, kind of at that level now where I need some help, need some support. Um, what would you, where would you advise them to start first? I guess, I guess the first thing that we did, um, you know, it, it gets to a point where when, when you're doing 40 or 50 deals a year, you're, you're starting to get crazy busy and you're all over the place and you don't know, you, you really don't know which, which direction you're going in and you're not having much time at home. So I always tell people like when agents are asking me, when they get to that 40 to 50 deal, they, they need an assistant. The first thing is they got to get an assistant. They got to get somebody to look after the paperwork. They got to get somebody to look after setting up showings. They get, you know, get rid of all the crap um, and pay somebody to do that so that you can go out and, and do the things that are generating the most amount of income for you. Right. So, which, you know, are your a, uh, things that you should be doing, not the B and C things, but the A things like like prospecting, like going out, showing properties, doing contracts, things like that. So I know that when we hired our first assistant, my business almost doubled um, that following year. So I was just so much more effective. I wasn't as tired and um, it was just way more efficient, I guess, at the end of the day. Yeah. So that would be my first hire. Yeah. Yeah, it's like so. It's like the old eighty twenty rule, right? Like, as a single agent doing their own stuff, they're having to do one hundred percent of the deal. But when you when you get to a point um, where you're hiring staff, you're looking to get rid of the eighty percent, right? The eighty percent that only brings you twenty percent of your results, so you yeah. can focus on the twenty percent, right? And that twenty percent really is, you know, ultimately lead generation, writing contracts, going on appointments, you know, all of that, taking listings. Um, yeah. You know, what I find is too many agents, um, you know, they want to start a team just to start a team. It's not because they're so busy. They're just, they got this, oh, I want to start a team. And like, I always tell agents, like, until you're way too busy taking listings that you can't afford the time to take buyers out, then yeah. don't start a team, right? So how, yeah. how do you start a team? In my opinion is go take as many listings as you possibly can so that you don't have time for buyers. And that's when you're, you can truly leverage over the you know, the opportunity that, that takes the most time, which is shown yeah. buyers' homes, right? So, yeah. Well, you you coach so many teams and so many big teams. So I'm sure you've seen the, you know, the goods and the bads all the way through, right? And yeah. and the point that you just made about, about uh, yeah, I just want a team, I want a team, or I sometimes know. people partner up. And and the partnering up thing, I, I, I've yet to see it. I think I've only ever seen one successful partnership in my whole time in, in real estate in the 17 years. And the rest of them always fall apart because there's always one guy or one lady working harder than the other. And, and, and it's just, um, you know, it, people get resentful and everything else. So, so yeah, but the team, so the team has to be, you have to build a team for the right reasons for sure. Yes. And so true. Like partners, like it's, it's so funny when I get, you know, when I talk to partnerships, I go, Oh gosh, like, you know, I hope, when is this going to end? Right. Cause they, most of them do now. I can't say that for all of them. Cause there are a few, I know a few successful partnerships, but in those partnerships, you know, there's total clarity of role. They recognize the, what one is good at and one is not good at. And those tend to, to be okay. But in most of the partners, uh, don't work out. You know, and the other thing is always in an agent's mindset, they think their first hire is an agent. And that's the that's biggest right. mistake that like what happens is they hire the first agent, it falls apart, and then they realize the right process. And like you said, the right process is, you know, when you're so busy, you need to leverage off the paperwork and leverage off all of the stuff. And that's why the very first hire you hire is an admin. And when you do that, no different than what you had said is, man, you can double your business just because yeah. you're giving away 80% of the work to an admin that and is good at that because typically like agents like yourself are not great at paperwork or not great at the Come administrative on. 
No, <laughs> come on. Trust me, I co coach enough to, a lot. I always say I was on a call yesterday with an, with one of the um, admin of a huge team, and I said to her, "Don't tell anyone I told you this, but you're the most important part of this team." Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it's true. Together, true. Right? yeah true it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. So, so listen. You know, agents starting a team, you know, again, they hire the first admin, they get rolling. Now they're going, okay, I got an admin. I've taken so many listings. Now I need to hire kind of an agent. Where do they start? Like, um, you know, looking for agents or, or recruiting agents or attracting agents. Like what's the best avenue for them to, to look for for agents? Well, usually, I mean, if you're producing and you're doing a lot, you're, you're going to, I think you're automatically going to attract a few people. I mean, I know when I started, um, the, the thing that I got was I had agents asking me if, if I needed help. Right. So in the beginning, I was just starting to feed them deals. I was giving them stuff and just getting a referral, getting them to help me out that way. And then eventually building relationships with those people. And, and I knew it was a good fit. Then I would hire them as, as a, you know, as a, uh, well, I, we, we never really called them buyer's agents because, you know, my agents have always done both. They've done selling and, and listing and, and bars. So, I, I wouldn't say just hiring a buyer's agent, right? It's an agent to help with whatever you need. And then there's different ways of paying that agent as well too. But um, uh, that, that would be the next step. Cool. Yeah. And I, I, I teach a class called the five C's of recruiting. We won't get into the, the first three C's, but the last two C's are chemistry and commitment. And so, you know, when I look at teams, like, you know, hiring for a brokerage is very different than hiring for teams. Because like, yeah. let's be honest, most brokerages, if you can smoke, fog up a mirror, they're going to hire you as a real estate agent. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. In the brokerage world, that is the truth, right? Yeah. yeah. Team, that's the biggest mistake teams can make is just hiring anybody off the street. Like they need to yeah. fit to the culture of the team. They need to fit with uh, the, the other agents you have there. If you don't, you're you can create a disaster. And then the yeah. second level is commitment because. You know, agents, you know, there's a lot of agents that the reason that they don't produce, like, listen, all agents have the same opportunity. There's right. some exactly. agents and it's simply because they're not committed enough to the business. So yeah. joining a, you know, joining a team and you not being committed is not going to, is not a good fit, right? So you got to make sure that they're committed to the expectations that you have of them, right? So Yeah. And there, there's the other thing that that fits into there too, is the accountability, right? So, I mean, when, when I, when I first started my team, there, there was an awful lot of accountability and, and if people weren't uh, being held accountable and they weren't doing, you know, the things that we were, you know, asking them to do and and stepping up, because um, a lot of times people get on a team and they think, oh, we don't have to do anything. We're just going to they're just going to feed us. But that's that's not the truth. Right. They've got to hustle. they got to work and, and they got to be part of the same vision that the team leader has. Right. Yep. hundred yeah. percent. hundred percent. Always like, I mean, you know, I encourage agents to do a disc or do some sort of personality profile. Like, let's see. I mean, if you know much about the the disc profile, like, let's see that they're a good salesperson. Yeah. Um, you know, because we tend to hire people, we tend to hire people that are are exactly like us because we like them, not yeah. because they're a good fit on our team, right? So yeah. we got to be really careful to make sure that they're that they're the right people. Awesome. Yeah. So you mentioned pay structure. So again, a lot of people are out there going, hey. You know, what do we, what, do, how do we set that up? Because one of the biggest mistakes that I think teams can make is yeah. out of the gate, they set up the wrong pay structure and then it's hard to do takeaways. Like it's hard to go to an agent and go, Hey, we're changing our pay structure this year because, well, I didn't make any money whatsoever. And I paid for a lot of stuff because agents don't fly with that very easily. So yeah. like out of the gate, setting up the right pay structure is so important. So like, what do you do or what have you learned over the 14 years well, um, in we, we, we probably changed our pay structure uh, probably a dozen times in 17 years. Honestly, yeah. we're constantly trying to evolve and trying to be competitive and trying to bring on good people. Like this is my thing. I would rather take less to the team and have a better agent that I don't have to babysit that are, are self-motivated and can go out and grow um, than take more and have to be more involved at this stage. Right. When I got in, I mean, when I first started uh, with the team, I mean, obviously, I just needed help. I, I, I was going crazy and I, I probably made all the mistakes of hiring too fast, right? Yeah. And hiring the first person that I could get. And you know what? They just didn't fit the culture. So unfortunately, I didn't have any leadership that taught me how to build a team back then. And it probably wasn't until about five years in having a team that I started doing some coaching. And and I had a coach that said, you know what? You're crazy. You got all these people that are, that are taking up all your time, uh, they don't know what they're doing, and they're stressing you out. You'd rather have less people 
that are doing a great job than a whole bunch of people. But the problem is a lot of times our egos get in the way and it, you know, we want a big team. We want to have the biggest team, right? Well, I'll tell you right now, the biggest team isn't the most profitable team. Yeah. Indeed. I mean, we, we got to a point where we had uh, 21 agents and um, you know, I tell the story of what I, what I made that year and I look back and I go, why, why do all that work with that many people? We're, yeah, we were the top producers. We had the most amount of deals. We had all that, but that doesn't put, um, you know, food on the table. That doesn't put a paycheck in your pocket at the end of the day. So, so yeah. bigger, bigger isn't always better guys. I'll tell you that. And then, you know, after that we had a cleanse and the next year we did less deals, made more money. So yeah, I would rather do a lot less deals, not be number one. And have the most amount of money left in my pocket at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Well, and yeah. again, there's different yeah. different types of teams, right? And like back, like truly, like I I've been in business for 20, 22, 20, 23 years, real estate, and I had a team probably 10, 12 years ago. Like teams didn't exist 10, 12 years ago, right? So when yeah. you entered into a 14 years ago, like you were a pioneer in, in growing a team, so you didn't really have a lot of people to go to and say, hey, what has worked over the years, right? Back yeah. then. Real estate was a single agent business. There, it really wasn't. No, I tried that. I, in my last brokerage, I went and there was one guy with a team. There was only one other guy in my town with a team. And I went to him and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to pick his brain. Yeah, he gave me nothing <laughs> because I was a competitor. He gave me nothing, right? So, yeah, I mean, uh, so, so having the coaching was great. But I'll tell you now, going back to when we're talking about split, when I first started, everybody was on a 50 50, but I paid for everything, right? Plus, yeah, yeah. I applied leads. Plus, I, you know, obviously, I gave them a lot of business to run with. So, you know, I, I talked to a guy and some people say, oh, 50, 50, that's crazy. But it's just like charging commission. Some people charge 4%, you know, some people charge 5%. But if there's value there at the end of the day, who cares? I talked to a guy actually in Ottawa and he was on a big team there. And one night we were sitting there and we're having a beer and he's telling me, I said, what's your split? He goes, I'm on a 50, 50 split. And I'm like, holy jeez. And, and this guy does about 300 GCI a year and he's on a team. He yeah. said, man, he goes, I don't care what I pay. I care about what I keep. And right now I'm keeping way more money than I've ever kept. And I don't have to worry about the hassles of, you know, what's my next marketing plan? What am I going to do uh, tomorrow for, you know, setting up showings and things like that? He goes, I just go and sell houses and I make a ton of money and I'm profitable. And he's on a 50, 50. Well, it's back to the 80, 20, right? Like, so a lot of those agents just say, hey, I just want to do the 20% because I'm really good at it. So if I have a team that gives me enough value that I can just, like you said, just go and sell and make, I mean, I, I know plenty of team members that are making 200 plus thousand dollars a year on a team, but they're just going out and selling. They're doing what they love. And and that's, that's exactly it. They recognize yeah. if I step back and do all the crap I don't like, I don't yeah. want to do that. Right. Exactly. So what we've done now, now lately, what we've done is we've changed that. So we originally 50, 50, then I started doing 50, 50 for listings. And I started doing 70, 30. Um, if they had somebody from their own circle of influence come in. Um, and then now what we've done is we have them on a floating scale. So from zero to 50 GCI, you're at this pay scale from 50 to hundred and then hundred up you're at, you're at the top pay scale. Okay. Um, but these agents, I mean, I got a lot of agents that come to us and they go, well, you know what? I don't want to do the crap. If I can pay you that amount, I will keep more money and I can just have more time to golf, spend time with my family and do whatever. And you yeah. can look after all the crap, right? Yeah. yeah, it's agents that really look at it like a business, right? Because yeah. like sometimes agents go, well, I'm not paying 50%. But then they're having to do like, then you have to pay for your own administrative yeah. stuff, whatever that is. You have to pay for your, like all that sort of stuff. So, you know, a lot of the teams I coach straight across 50, 50, um, still. And, and again, those agents are making good money. Um, you know, I actually kind of like the sphere of influence. You give them a bit more because what I also notice is you don't want to create birds on a team where they're just sitting going, Hey, Pierre, give me more business. Give me more leads. You know, you yeah. want them to, to involve their sphere of influence. You want them to, you know, to go after and be chasing business. You know, I, I want to, you know, when on my team, I still want a hunter. I still want someone that wants to go hunt for business. I don't want someone sitting back, you know, waiting to be served, you know, uh, leads. Right. So, you know, I, I, the fact that you're paying them more just encourages them to, to go after more of their own business, which is my absolutely. opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think that's a fair, I think it's a fair model what we're offering now. Um, you know, we, we don't make as much money, but we have some really good agents and, and, you know, we have stability. But, and, and the problem is when you're, you know, when you're on a 50, 50 too, a lot of times agents will look at that and eventually, you know, there used to be a time where people would come to us, they learn everything and then they go somewhere else. Right. So yeah. then you're, you're starting all over, you're starting the training, you're starting everything else. So, so that's why we start them at the bottom and let them work their way up so that they, they can, you know, graduate to something that's more affordable for them rather than leaving you. Right. Yeah. So I'd rather yeah. make, yeah, keep everybody happy.
Yeah, I mean, I have a team that I coach in, uh, I think they're in Colorado, and they have, I don't know, 20 some odd team members. But what, what they've done, and I think I, I think it's awesome, is they've taken their top agents and to give those top agents opportunity, they've built little teams under the big team, right? So they have their own little team and are showing assistance or whatever. And they so they build their team under the team. Um, and again, that helps leverage the team leader, right? Because now the leverage, the team leader just has to go in and check in with their, you know, with their head people and those head people are running their own little teams. And that's how he's created opportunity for agents that are killing it. Now these agents are responsible to go out and build their own teams and do some of their own training. And like, while the team still offers that, um, you know, they do it some of their own. And it's, it's an amazing growth trajectory that I've watched this team kind of get to where now the team leader is overseeing, you know, other leaders because he's brought up other leaders and now they're overseeing teams. Right. So it's yeah. awesome. Speaking of that, like you yeah. mentioned kind of what, what, you know, what do you do for a team versus them being as a single agent? So when someone comes to you and says, Hey, Pierre, I want to join your team, but what, what are you going to do for me? Like, what is your value proposition? What is it that exactly you do? Yeah, we actually do quite a bit. I mean, when, when, when you talk about team, like we, we run it as a group, you know, right now we're called an adult real estate group. We run it more as a group rather than a team now. Um, everybody on our team is our partner. So we never, if I'm sending somebody to an appointment, it's never, I'm never saying, Hey, my, my assistant or whatever is going to go see you. It, it's my partner. My partner is going to come and see you. They're going to, you know, they're going to do the evaluation or whatever. Right. And, um, so everybody's a partner and, um, I lost track where we were going with that. Like, <laughs> Squirrel. Listen, most most agents are that way anyway. Like, you know, oh, hey, yeah. hey, someone walked by. Hey, hey. Squirrel. <laughs> that's, awesome. so, you know, that's what happens with us, right? <laughs> what was the original question? So what were we talking about? Um, no, I, so what we were, we were talking about is like when an agent comes to you and wants and says, hey, what value am okay. I getting? In value proposition, right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we actually offer quite a bit because when, when agents come in, they become their own teams, basically. So they've got a marketing person working underneath them, doing all their marketing, social media, uh, all that kind of stuff. Then we have, um, obviously, we have um, our, our admin staff that look after a lot of the admin work for them, uh, help them out there. If they need something in a hurry, sent off or whatever. So if they're on the roll, they can call in, boom, it's done. But I have what I call an all-inclusive resort. So they come here, they pay one fee, and it's like, okay, here, this is what you get. So, you know, they get to use this is, and this is where some of the newer agents coming in. Like if I have an agent that's doing 10 or 15 deals and they want to get the 30 deals, well, how do you do that? Right? Well, they can use our listing presentation. So now when they show up and they say, Hey, we're in the top 1% in Canada, we do this, we do that. This is what our team offers. This is what our group offers. It's not like even a brand new person, I can get to beat out a, a veteran agent at a higher commission because of what we offer. So yeah. we do that listing presentation with them. We show them how to do that. We do training. And then also, um, you know, we supply the stager, we supply the uh, video photography for them, all their brochures, all their signage, all their cards. Um, if they're doing mail outs and things like that, we supply everything. So this is the thing. I give them all the tools. They have to do the work. Yeah. Right? So I can give them everything, but I can't do the work for them. So yeah. but we supply all that stuff. And uh, we also supply leads for our team. Uh, lead generating systems and, and things like that. So they get leads. And, uh, and I think that's important when somebody's wanting to grow and get to that next level. And then when they do want to move on to the next level, then we have another tier that they can move on to. So, yeah, yeah, it makes uh, sense. So like, you, when you say you have leads for them, I think one of the biggest um, kind of myths out there is that I join a team and that I should, I should just be handed leads and work the leads. And I, you know, for me, I look at that and I go, you know, Teams that make that mistake in how they recruit yeah. tend to have a, a really like you know they their the retention is terrible. They just keep going through agents and through agents, um, you know, because it's hard to produce enough leads to or not, or enough. When I say enough leads, I mean enough leads that turn into transactions mm -hmm. uh, to make an agent a hundred percent satisfied. Not not that they can't. Uh, yeah. But it's a struggle. So talk to me a little bit about that. When you say, hey, we provide leads, what does that mean to an agent? Does that mean, oh, man, I can come and sit in the office and Pierre's just going to start throwing leads at me? Or or like, what does that mean? Yeah, well, that's a good question because, I mean, the, it, there's always the, the um, like, we've, we've, we've had ISAs, like inside sales agents, helping us with things. And, and that is the toughest role in the world. To, to, to fill like it's just it's I so difficult that. so so we've gone back and forth we've had the inside sales agents and then we've also had where the agents are getting the leads themselves right 
So when they are getting the leads, I mean, it's their job to follow up with them. We have a CRM for them all set up. Uh, they got their own websites and everything else. So when they go in there, they, you know, we supply the leads. So when somebody lists a property, we'll do a banner, we'll do some Facebook advertising, and we do a bunch of that anyways for each individual um, partner. And then those leads go back to their their website, which is KV Core. And um, at that point, it's up to them to follow up, and they have a drip system and all the trainings in place for us to do all that. So. So that's, that's the part, like, it's like going to an open house, right? You go into an open house, you, you got to close the deal. Like you got to, you got to ask the right questions to close those, close those people. Right. What's well, the same thing on the phone? Because I think generating leads and lead gen now has become the new open house. It's become, you know, now it's not everything. And I tell the agents that it's one pillar. That is one pillar. You need, you know, seven, at least seven pillars to make a hundred grand a year. So that's yeah. one, right. Uh, open house is another and so on and so forth. Right. So, um, so do you, hold, do you hold them accountable to those other pillars? Like, do you say, Hey, um, I need you to do so many open houses, uh, you know, in, in the month or the week, or you need to make sure you're following up with your, like you give them a plan to help them with all of those other pillars. Cause like, I think you know that's, what? you know what, we've changed the way we're doing things when I first started. Okay. And I had three or four people on the team. Um, yes, there was a ton of accountability. There was a ton of babysitting. Now that we've grown, so we grew our team big enough uh, when we were at Royal Page, and then we moved over and opened our own brokerage. Okay. Once I opened my own brokerage, I ran it like a team model, right? Okay. And so we had an independent, we ran it as a team model, and the accountability actually went down. I was kind of bringing on agents, letting them do their own thing, because you know what? <laughs> there, there was a time that if, if an agent wasn't doing, you know, at least 20 deals a year, I'd fire them every year. That was the accountability but i will tell you i went through i think one day i looked at my <laughs> my files and i think i went through 28 agents in a period of about four or five years yeah so my wife one day says to me she says listen she goes why are you getting rid of these people they're good people they're not causing you any headaches they're veterans in the business they've been a lot around a long time and and they're still bringing money to the table so why wouldn't you keep them if they're not a, a you know damaging your culture so then we did, we started keeping some of those agents because what I had to realize, because I'm so competitive, you know, not everybody wants to do 80 to hundred deals a year, right? Yeah. There's some people that are happy doing their 10 deals a year, right? Yeah. And, and I have, to, I had to come to that understanding. It took me a long time when I went through a lot of agents, but um, I had a great coach one time, uh, Willie Miranda, who said to me, he says, you know, you, you got to keep some of these good people, right? Keep them in there because at the end of the day, they're going to, they're going to add to the, uh, the bottom line. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, that's why, you know, talking to you is so important for agents to be listening in on this because agents like yourself, who's been doing this for 14 years, have had to learn by making mistakes, by going through the pitfalls, by going through all of that. Um, you had to, you, you, you know, and now like, coming out of this, agents don't have to do that. Like they just need to listen to other agents like you um, who's done it successfully and, uh, you know, rip off and duplicate or copy, right? Because right. that's 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 the name of the game, right? I mean, I, why would I make the same mistakes if I know that uh, if I know Pierre and Pierre Pierre made those mistakes for me? Then hey, let's follow that. So super important for agents to really listen to this and, and understand kind of all of that. So yeah. listen, what have some of your pitfalls been? Like when you look at growing uh, a team for that long, like what what have been some of your biggest ahas or going, holy cow, I should have did that different? Obviously, you mentioned the one where. You got rid of a lot of people that you probably should have kept. Um, what's yeah. another, a couple others? Well, I think I think the biggest aha that I've had over the years is to make sure that you have systems in place. Because, you know, when somebody does leave you, if you have an admin person and they're running everything and you have no idea what they're doing and then they leave, um, that, 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 that cripples you, right? Because now all of a sudden you're doing 50, 60, 70 deals a year and all of a sudden somebody leaves and guess what? You've now become the solo agent again, right? Yeah. Um, we had a situation, you know, years ago where, and, and I learned this, this was a perfect example. We had somebody leave and of course now all of a sudden we're going crazy trying to figure everything out. Right. And, yeah. and again, we're not, I'm not the detailed guy. I'm not the guy that gets all the, you know, <laughs> all the yeah. systems, but I'm, we're good at creating them. So we created systems. So at one point we did have somebody leave and you know what, within a week, we were back up and running because somebody could grab the manual, they could look at it, they could figure out, okay, hey, this is what I do for this, this is what I do for that, and it was done. So everything was systemized. Um, yeah. And if you don't do that, you will be held hostage, right, by your staff. 
So yeah. you know, just make sure, I think that's one of the biggest things, make sure that you're systemized. Your system, you, I mean, again, I, I watch agents progress as, you know, and, and not necessarily you, but there's plenty of agents out there that go, hey man, I want to open up an office in Toronto. And, that, and I always say to them, like, unless you have a duplicatable system, then yeah. there's then don't even do it right. So there's a book I think called um, Atomic Habits by James Clear, and he, he says if you're having trouble changing your habits, it might not be you; it's your system. We do not rise to the level of our goals; we fall to the level of our systems. Oh yeah, right. That's so cool. it's one of those things that you know if you're going to do it, and and we should just create duplicatable systems so it's easy for people to fall. Like we also. You know, think about oh, running a team is so difficult. Everyone's always coming to me. Well, if if you've always got the same people coming to you and always got the same questions, there's a way to solve some of that, which is create yeah. a system around it so it's it's yeah. easy for them to follow, right? Yep. And there's all kinds. Of, I'm working on uh, creating a system for some of my clients right now and and helping them to create that duplicatable model. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's your team is going to be very different than any other team, but I think there is a, a a template that at least you could follow that we've learned over the years to, you know, be successful. If you don't, if you're not good, at, this is what I'm going to say too about systems. If you're not good at creating systems, get involved with a company that does have systems, get it, yeah. get involved with somebody who um, is going to help you, you know, with those systems and you can copy their systems, right? Because, you don't have like that's the problem. I tried to I tried to figure it out all on my own, right? And it yeah. wasn't until I started paying for coaching that yeah. I realized, you know what? I don't need to figure all this out. It's already out there for me. I just need to grab it, implement it, and be done, right? Yeah. Yep. So so I think that 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 was that was the most important part. Yeah. And that's why we're creating we're like we're creating that manual because of that because like it's yeah. it is an easy like I mean when I'm watch when I've watched you know I've been in coach for ten years when I watch people struggle growing a team and I simply go man like. It, it's out there. Go, go look for it. Go, you know, go create your system first. Like we don't, we don't take a, a vacation randomly. We plan and we, you know, look at all that. So it's the same with your business. Like you just don't go out and go, Hey, I'm going to start a team without planning and creating that system. Cool. All right. So listen, um, we, you know, we've been chatting about 27 minutes. We're, we're kind of coming up on 30 minutes here. Um, thanks for everything that you've shared. That's awesome. I want to ask you one more question. Yeah. Uh, kind of one piece of advice that you would um, give to someone that wanted to start a team that you've learned over the past 14 years, if there was just one thing that you would say to somebody, what would it be? I, I think the biggest thing I've been thinking about this, we, we, you know, you kind of gave me an idea yesterday, what we were going to talk about. And, and I've been trying to think about this. And I think the biggest thing is you need to get a coach or a mentor or somebody who's done it before to lead you rather than trying to reinvent the wheel and then get yourself in the system. Like, I mean, we started building a small team. Then we went to a huge team. Then we, we scaled back a little bit to having a more profitable team. And now we're in a situation where, you know, we're lined up with, with coaches and training companies and different things where we're now building a team across North America, which is a whole other, you know, conversation. And if anybody wants to know about that, you know, just reach out to me. And if any of the stuff that I've talked to you about, um, appeals to you, reach out to me and I'm more than happy to give you all my secrets of what went wrong, what didn't, you know, what didn't go wrong, what I would suggest for you, because everybody's situation is a little bit different. So if I could say anything, get yourself a coach, get yourself a, you know, somebody that's in leadership that knows what they're doing and pick their brain like crazy, because that's all I did for, for so many years and then just kept readjusting. And what was the one thing we said? Hire slow, fire fast. <laughs> right? yep. slow, fire. I mean, everyone's in this big rush, right? So everyone's yeah. in this big rush to, to grow a team and they don't need to be right. Like, so yeah. hire slow, fire fast. Yeah. Um, exactly. One of the things that I, one of the things I really appreciate about you is you've been doing this for 14 years. You're super humble. And, you know, I know, I mean, you invited me to a bunch of uh, masterminds, like you're always looking to learn and grow. And, and, you know, I, I love people like that because I've, I've been doing it 22 years and I learned so much um, from great friends and mentors like you, um, you know, by just keeping an open mind and being willing to, to hear why, when and how people have done it and found their way through mistakes or, or successes or whatever. Yeah. So um, if someone wants to get in touch with you, how, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, you know, they can reach out to me anywhere on uh, on Facebook or, um, you know, my uh, my cell number is 613-539-9950 and uh, they can track me down somehow. But uh, what's your email? 
What's your email? Uh, Just your email. Pierre, uh, dot Nado at exprealty.com. Cool, cool. All right, Pierre, listen, thanks. Appreciate your time today. I um, hope uh, hope you guys uh, out there, you know, listen to what Pierre said. He's, he's, he's helping you pave the way to a more smooth and successful path because it doesn't have to be as rough as, as I think Pierre probably and I have felt it over the years. Um, and this man, appreciate you, appreciate your friendship. And I look forward to uh, working with you, uh, you know, along the path. Yeah. Awesome, Jared. Thanks for having me. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thanks, bud.